I'm going to solve this 3 by 3 by 3 Rubik's Cube by reducing it to a towel cube and then by using domino algorithms to solve that. This is the kind of state that I'm talking about where opposite colours are orientated on the up and down layers. Just like this domino cube and this tower cube. On a tower cube the opposite faces of the up and down layer are only interchangeable with each other because if I try to make a 90 degree turn the moves are blocked and the pieces are not exchangeable with each other. The same is the case with this cube if I only make R2 turns like that. To reduce this cube to the state of a scrambled tower cube is quite a simple process. The first thing I'm going to do is notice that my up and down layers are yellow and white and I'm going to place all of my middle layer edges. That will reduce all of my up and down layer edges or all of my white and yellow edges to these spots around here. So let's put all of the equatorial layer edges into their places. I'm going to start with the blue and orange edge piece here, turn it onto my blue center and then place it in between my blue and orange centers. The next piece that I can see is this green and red piece. I'm going to place it on top of my green center and turn it down next to my red center piece. The next edge piece that I notice without yellow or white on it is this red and blue edge piece. Now in order to maintain that in its position I'm going to turn my red face one turn so that when I put this piece on it makes a line and I can install it by turning that into place like that. The last one that I have is going to be orange and green. There it is there. I'm going to need to do exactly the same thing there so that I don't displace that one. I'm going to turn that piece one turn like that, turn that on and then return it. And I've created my equatorial layer that is solved. What I'm going to do next is to orientate or flip all of these pieces on my up and down layers so that they're either white or yellow. Their placement doesn't matter at this stage, only that they're yellow or white. The first type of pieces that I'm going to orientate are going to be my edge pieces and next I'll orientate my corners. To orientate edge pieces I will need even numbers of edge pieces on each face. So I'm going to make my first turn across my orange face and this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to line up one piece that's not yellow or white and line up one piece that is and replace it out. Now that I've orientated all of my edge pieces in my U layer I'm going to flip my cube over temporarily and perform an algorithm that does not affect any of my edge pieces in my equatorial layer. My algorithm is front, up, right, up, back, right, back, front, back. And that will orientate two edge pieces like that. If I get a straight line, I'll put it that way and perform front, up, right, up, back, right, back front back and I'll get a backwards L shape then I can perform again front up right up back right back front back and all of my edge pieces will become orientated and notice that those algorithms did not change the equatorial layer at all so I can just flip my cube back up so that I've got my green on my front face and my orange on my right face. 
After I've orientated my edge pieces, the next thing that I'm going to do is to orientate my corner pieces or flip my corner pieces over so that I've only got either yellow or white on that top face. Now how I'm going to do that is with an algorithm called Soon. And because Soon does not affect any of my equatorial layer edge pieces, I can perform that at will and then return back to the state where I've got my green face as my front face and my orange face as my right face later on. Right, so I'm going to apply it randomly across the top just to orientate a few. In this case I've orientated only one. If I apply it again with this one orientated in my lower left position I'm likely to get another one orientate at least because holding it in my lower left position means that I'm not going to change the orientation of this one. And I've just happened to orientate all of them. However the situation goes, you can always just rotate across your orange and green edge to create whatever pattern on the top that you need to. In this situation I've been left with one that needs orientating on the top and one that needs orientating on the bottom. So in, in order to place an orientation pattern onto the top I'm going to exchange one of my orientated pieces here and replace it out in a vertical switch with this piece and this piece. My vertical edge piece switch for this piece and this piece is R2 U R2 U anti-clockwise R2 and I've got my bottom face completely orientated and my top face has a pattern on it that I'm going to orientate with soon. I'm going to limit the amount of orientation patterns to three specific types of orientation patterns and that is those that require flipping two pieces, those that require flipping three pieces and those that require flipping four pieces or four pieces. If you've got a situation where you need to flip two pieces you place the pieces in such an arrangement that this one on the lower left has one of the pieces that needs orientating in the front position here. So the yellow piece needs to go this way, I'm placing that there and then I'll perform soon. That leaves me with an orientation pattern of th three and three is my goal orientation pattern. If I've got an orientation pattern that has three, then I place my piece that is orientated in either this or this position, and the other side, the unorientated piece, needs one that needs to orientate up, so a yellow or a white piece. So I've got my yellow or white piece in either this or this position, in this case it's this one, and this does not have that yellow or white piece, so I'll place it in the only other arrangement that's possible, and that's that arrangement where that's in the front position and this is requiring orientating it to there. This is the circumstance in which I'll need to perform the mirror of soon, which we call anti-soon, which is and all of my pieces will become orientated. The only other pattern that you're going to come across is that where there's four that need orientating. And in this case, here's an example of it. If I've got four that need orientating, I turn the two pieces that need orientating, two of the pieces that need orientating this way onto this position. So a yellow or white piece in both of these positions. 
Now, these yellow or white pieces might be here or here. That doesn't matter. As long as I've got two in this position, this will work. And I'll get my situation where I've got three that need orientating. And in this case, my orientated piece is already there. And that yellow or white piece is there. In this case, it's yellow. It needs orientating that way. So I'll perform this one. And all of my pieces are orientated. Let's try another pattern with our formula. I've got two that need orientating. I need one of those pieces to have a yellow or white piece here. There it is. I'm going to perform soon. And then I have one piece that's orientated and three that need orientating in this front position that's closest to me but there's no yellow or white there. So I'll move it to my other front position closest to me and I get a yellow or white there. And I perform anti soon because it's on my left hand side. And all of my pieces are orientated to be either yellow or white on my top and bottom faces. My center equatorial layer is completed and I've successfully reduced my cube to being a scrambled tower cube.